Hey you guys, this is problem number 28 from chapter 3 on voltage division and current division. And we have a circuit that looks, uh, has a little bit of, um, doesn't look like our normal circuit that we're used to, but you'll see pretty soon that it's actually just a fancy way of expressing a circuit that you've probably seen many, many times. So this is a 125 volt independent voltage source. We have two ohms connected in series with six and 15, um, 6 is connected in series with 15 in parallel with 20 in this branch. And then over here, we have 15 in series with 12 in series with 13. And we want to find IG, which is the current going into that node. And then we also want to uh, find I0, I which is the current going through the 20 ohm branch. So, the way to solve this is the first thing that you have to do is uh, you have to reduce all of this, all these resistors into one equivalent resistance. Why? Because we need to find IG. And IG is the total current. And once you reduce everything to a single resistance, then you, do, you use Ohm's law, E is equal to IR, to find the total, res the total current going in. Then you will use voltage division to see how it branches off. Okay, because this will break up. Using current division, you will find out how much of it will break up here, how much of it will break into here. Again, you're going to use a second layer of current division to find the, the amount of current that goes into the branch here. So, that is the strategy. Pause the video, try it on your own. Okay, now the solution, what we said. We said the first thing we have to do is to find IG. IG is the total current of this circuit. Therefore, to find it, we have to find the total resi equivalent resistance of the entire system. So, what is that? Well, this too is in series with all of this. And what is all that? Let's take it one piece at a time. We have this weird looking... Was it, we have this, we know that this branch here... If you look at this branch here... It is connected in parallel as a whole with this and this. It's connected, parallel, connected to that. So we know at the big level, we have 15. Um, well, we have that, right? Let's just call it like that. It's connected in parallel with the blue. You see that? So that's at the highest lay layer. So we have something is in parallel. So we have that is in parallel with what's in blue. Now, let's do the red because it's the easiest. This is just three, ser connect three resistors connected in series with each other. So the red will be 15 in series with 12 in series with 13. Okay? And then now what's going on here? This is more complicated because we have this diagonal resistor. But if we look closely at this diagonal resistor, it's got a termination point here, it's got a termination point here. And everything between here and here is just a piece of wire. So if we think about it, we have two terminate two resistors that are connected at the same point at their endpoints with each other, and that is the very definition of a parallel connection. So we know that phi is in parallel with 20. But what's their relationship to 6? Well, 6 is connected only at one point, one endpoint. It's connected end to end with this parallel connection. Therefore, 6 is in series with the phi, which is in parallel with the, uh, with the 20. So this represents branch, the blue branch. This represents the red branch. And they are in parallel with each other. So now, let's go ahead and add this together. I think, I did this earlier today, 15 plus 12 plus 13 is 40. So this is going to be 40, right? In parallel with what? Well, with 6 in series with 1 over 5 plus 
1 over 20. That's how you calculate that parallel. You do 1 to 5 plus 1 divided by 20. That gives me 4. So that's what that parallel branch is worth. And I'm going to park that equation here. 5 in parallel with 20 is 4. And we're going to come back to that. We need that uh, for using current division. So now I replace this with 4. right? 6 in series with 4 is 10. 40 in parallel with 10 is 1 over 40 plus 1 over 10. Inverse that. 1 divided by 40 plus 1 divided by 10. Inverse that will give me 8. So now I have 8. Well, 8 was in series. So all of this reduced to 8. And 2 was in series with 8, so the whole system has an equivalent resistance of 10 ohms. And why did we need that? We need that to find Ig, which is the total current. So we're going to use V is equal to Ir, which is Ohm's law. So I, therefore, is V over R, right? That's 125 volts over 10 ohms. Volts ohms is amps, so that gives me 12.5 amps, which is part A. So this is 12.5 amps. Now, now we know that there's 12.5 amps going into here. So now we can say for sure this is 12.5 amps, like that. Right? So now we need to know how will this 12.5 amps split? Why do we need to know that? Because we're trying to find this, and so we need to know what is going in here, what current's going in here that's going to split in there. So we will do two layers of current division to find that. Okay? First layer of current division, right, we need to do is find this current. I'm going to call this I1. This is I0, I1, and then um, this can be I2, but I don't really care because they're not asking me to find I2. So, but that's, so this current I1 is going to split off into I0 and I2. So we need to find out what I1 is. And current division says a current through the branch will be the, the equivalent resistance of the branch. Um, divided by whatever branch you're going through. That's a mouthful, but basically that says this current will see this resistance. It will see that whole resistance and it's going to split. It's going to go, more of it will go into the branch with less resistance, less of it will go into the branch with more resistance. Kind of like if you're driving on the freeway, right? You have three exits. You're going to go into the exit with less traffic, right? And that's what resistance is, is the, the freeway lane that has less traffic. So um, even electrons, when they're making a decision of which branch they're going to go, they see a certain amount of traffic and they take the path of least resistance. Um, so what is this branch? This branch here we said earlier was 40, right? And then this branch here is going to be 6 plus 4, right, which is 10. So I have 10 in parallel with 40. So the amount of resistance that this uh, the amount of resistance that this 12.5 amps sees, right, on the on-ramp, the so-called uh, freeway, is going to be 1 over 10 plus 1 over 40. Inverse that. Okay, we have 8 ohms equivalent resistance. Now, the amount that will go in here, right, I1, according to the laws of um, equivalent resistance is going to be it's going to be the total resistance that you see right going in before you get on the on ramp the total resistance traffic that you see or resistance that you see divided by the branch that you're looking at in this case it's going to be divided by the resistance that we're looking at here 
In this case, the resistance of this part, particular branch is going to be 6 uh, plus 4, which is 10, right? So that's the ratio of the total of what will go into that particular branch. And that's times the total current, 12.5 amps. So we have 12.5 times 8 divided by 10, 12.5. Times 8 divided by 10. And so I have 10 amps going into here. So now I know 10 amps is going to here. Again, this is going to split into I2 and then I1. So now we reapply um, current division to figure that out. We know earlier that we calculated the, the um, equivalent resistance of this arm ramp for this. Uh, that, that uh, break off point to be 4. So we know that I0 is going to be 4 divided by the branch that we're looking at, in this case is 20, times the current that's going in. The current going in is 10 amps. So we're going to go 10 times 4 divided by 20, and that gives me 2 amps, which is the answer over here. Okay, that's it you guys.